and boom, you worked for Suicide Silence or Metallica. Making tattoos, awesome. I will probably get more chicks, more money. It's, it's going to a really, really bad direction. It's kind of like a Middle Eastern European attitude. If you got some success, you suck. Uh, I'm Robert from uh, Ruka Thing. Well, what should I say? Like, as an introduction, I started to, to work as an illustrator, mainly for bands, like uh, t shirt designs, cover artworks. Then somehow I got this invitation from Jolt from Dark Art Tattoo. Then I cut into the, to the tattoo business. Uh, actually, I was hesitating for like eight months before I actually started it. But when I did my first tattoo, it was like, okay, I'm pretty much sure that I want to work as a tattooer. It just worked out, so now we talking here. I'm more like from the countryside, from a small village. Actually, my parents still live there. Then I moved to Mishkots for like uh, high school kind of stuff. It's kind of funny because it was like a Catholic school. So I spent like eight years there. Then uh, I moved to Budapest to the Contemporary Art University then studied animation for three years. So I got my degree as an animation director, basically. But after uni, I uh, never really worked again as an animator or something, or not even as a director. We did a couple of projects together with my fiancé for smaller bands, mostly like uh, post rock or alternative bands. But Back in time when we even did these videos, uh, illustration was much more my cup of tea. So I decided to go with that. And because of illustration, I got into tattoos. Uh, it's, I'm still doing illustrations. Like at the moment, I'm working on a, an album cover. Uh, but definitely 90% of my life is pretty much focused on to tattoos. I started to work with like smaller local bands where like pretty much my buddies we were sharing like the same rehearsal room so I kind of offered them like hey do you want me to, to do the album cover or or like a t-shirt design for a tour. And then we we're like yep no problem and I started to publish it on like a couple of social media platforms mainly it was way before Facebook when Facebook Facebook started to emerge, so it was like pretty much the renaissance of MySpace or something. Oh, yeah. And then like I started to hit up smaller, I'm not saying mediocre, but smaller bands. Smaller bands mainly with a record label, but not like, you know, like uh, superstars or whatever, because back in that time it was pretty much, you know, like uh, unbelievable for me and almost equal with zero that I could work for a bigger band. Then I found an online platform. It was called Minties. Oh, sorry, Empties back in time, then they changed it to Minties. What, uh, what time roughly are you talking about? Roughly, roughly when, when I started, my, started to date my fiance. So that was like seven years ago or something. Yeah, seven years, I would say. Okay. Six, seven, let's say. Um, so yep, yep, yep. I started to publish on that site and basically how it works, a lot of managers like uh, even for bigger bands visiting that site and they could hire you or if you got something for sale, they're just gonna make you an offer and boom, you worked for Suicide Silence or Metallica. And yeah, tell me, tell me the name, the big bands. The big bands, like uh, it was mostly this new wave metalcore, deathcore uh, uh, stuff. So Suicide Silence, Bring Me the Horizon, uh, Old Chaparish, Aborted. Uh, yeah, Aborted is a death metal band, but doesn't matter. Um, 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 SIA Dying. Uh, and then I worked for a couple of thrash metal bands with like, um, it's a shame, but I don't remember the management who, oh, Bravado, yeah. Uh, Bravado and another one, uh, they are quite big, like they're dealing with Justin Bieber and shit. Uh, but obviously my style didn't fit 
to work for Justin Bieber or something. So they oh, hit yeah, me yeah, up to, to, to work with Metallica. And it was like for, mm, I'm not sure if it was a world tour or just an Euro European one. Uh, but I did like a couple of designs and I'm still not quite sure which one of them got printed but they were like yep okay it's official you're working for this band then we got like uh, several uh, business together never worked out like uh, I got uh, an offer so I, I could work for Limb Biscuit, but they're how to say that like they were super strict about everything so it felt like much more like a pleasure pleasure than you know like uh, I hate to use this word but to express yourself as an artist uh, so the thing is like I started to work with these bands and these bands were touring with other bands so my name kind of spread all over the metal community and people started to follow my stuff then I started to do like personal prints and so on and so on and so on. Uh, so I was thinking I could make a living out of it and actually everything worked really well. But then I got this chance and I had to, you know, like examine it like, should I start something completely else, but still super close to illustration, but on a different canvas or just stick to illustration and who knows. And I think I made the right decision that I started tattooing because since then I still could do illustrations but I could be kind of more picky and stick to the old clients I worked with and I know that working with them is nothing but fun or struggling in the freelancer life you know like uh, I know a lot of friends they are like well-known illustrators but there's like ups and downs so like six months of work, then one year of like kind of starving. So tattoo financially and also as a journey seemed like a really nice step or kind of next level for me. And I, I really don't regret any moment of that. <laughs> yeah, we, we are here to talk about your tattoo art, but I'm so curious about you are sitting in your Budapest room, searching on MySpace or wherever. And you get the first uh, inquiry from a big band. Can you describe that? That was shocking because it was like, hey, I'm Oli from Bring Me the Horizon and I saw your stuff online. It's like, it have to be a fucking prank. Like, no way that Oli Sykes, the owner of Drop Dead, you know, like the underground uh, brand, hit me up. Then I asked for a down payment and literally two minutes later, it was on my PayPal. And it was like, you know, the official Bring Me The Horizon business paper. And then their management hit me up because of the, you know, like the files so they could produce it for the tour. I was like, okay, that's cool. That's awesome. So I published it. Even some of my, not friends, but buddies, they were like, oh, dude, like, why did you put on the Bring Me The Horizon logo? Because it was made for fucking Bring Me The Horizon. <laughs> and I remember when we were like sitting with my dead when I was six or five or whatever and he showed me like an Iron Maiden record it was like a huge huge scully thing called Eddie they're like um, like Kabbalah character with the devil underneath him catching the members of the band I was like actually someone painting this getting paid and got the credit doing like better stuff so it's like here we go that's what I want to do and basically I'm still doing it, but on another kind of canvas. So, yep. You are a successful uh, illustrator working for bands, and one day you wake up and you decide you, may, you are going to use different material and you well, paint on the skin. It was also kind of surrealistic experience because I had like a solo exhibition alongside with a performance with my band. We were organizing like a small festival uh, or our ex-vocalist got a small clothing brand. It's quite old and in Hungary I would say probably the biggest one. It's called Grindrise Clothing and we did the Grindrise Festival and we got to the point when we had like several managers and booking agencies 
like uh, um, Zoltan Jakob, who is like a really big name in the hardcore scene, and he's booking all the big shows and tours and, and stuff like that. And we ended up working with him. He was our manager, and he helped us a lot to to push our limits when it comes to the, the festival. So we got like a really nice promotion. We decided we should make like an exhibition and like a, a live painting. And then Jolt from Dark Art Tattoo, like I, I received a call from him like, hey, do you mind if I visit your exhibition? Because I, I would love to talk about your stuff. And honestly, I didn't even expect it that he gonna, you know, like, ask me this question, like, would you like to join the crew as a tattooer, like, or, or to, to learn how to tattoo? And I was hesitating for eight months, like I mentioned, because I wasn't sure, like, if it's something I should do, or, uh, you know, I, f I felt the responsibility. It's gonna be, like, a different method, different canvas. So I was like, you know, okay, fuck it, let's give it a try. It was like this Saturday, uh, I asked some of my friends and they were like, yeah, I could offer you my back so you could try out how it works. And obviously I was surrounded by professionals and they showed me everything, like how to set up a machine, the, your station, the hygienic stuff. And it's ended up quite well. I mean, like so far, how I remember, Joel told me like, okay, cool. Would you like to start like next week? <clears throat> so I started to gather together my friends first, like obviously for free, just to practice the whole thing. Uh, and after a month, like Joel told me, okay, you are the part of the crew, like 100% free. And despite all the struggles and, you know, like the first mistakes, what everybody should make, in my opinion, it was quite fast. So my whole career in the tattoo business was like super fast. I'm dating not even for four years now. And that was the problem when I decided to open my shop uh, with my fiance and gather the crew together. Uh, everybody told me like, that's a huge responsibility. You shouldn't do that. You're way too young. And not just like concerning the age, but the time I've spent in the business. But I told them like, hey, I was traveling all over the world, almost literally. Uh, and I feel like I'm, I'm able to do that and I should do that because that's gonna be even better for how to say that, like my personal progress. What about, uh, you are an artist, you, you paint, draw, whatever you get in your hand. What's the, the main difference between making something on a paper or making something on a human skin? Uh, that's a good question, actually. Um, the main difference is uh, you become a part of someone's life. And that lasts literally until the grave. I mean, like, talking about the biological process, probably your tattoo is going to be the last thing what's going to rot in the grave with you. I mean, like, obviously, you are just rotting in the grave. So even if you are dead, your tattoo is still there, and you ca gonna so you carry it. Survive, your art survives. Uh, until a point, yeah. It's of course just turning into dust. It but be nice advertisement. And it's like a walking advertisement. Like, hey, who did that? And yeah, this guy. Okay, cool. Could you give me a contact for for this guy? But but the thing is, like the tattoo itself. It's when it, we're talking about the the process of coming up with a tattoo idea, for me, the most important always, it has to fit the customer. I, when I don't feel confident or comfortable with the idea, I kind of refuse it. But first of all, I try to convince the customer like, hey, you should get this. But it's, it has nothing to do with your personality. Even if I just, you know, like, exchange a couple of emails, you seem like one not 100 100 percent is sure what you want to get or your idea is cool but i think we could put much more effort into it and we could turn it into something what is like you know like you are happy with it 
I'm happy with it and that's a win-win.